very good morning to all of you. And uh, you are due for listening. Now, how much, uh, Professor Shaf, how much uh, time shall be hold? It's your time, sir. It's your day. It's your day because it depends on your interest. You plan it for one hour. You plan it for one hour? Okay. I'll try to do it in that. Well, I am... I want to ask you, you are interested in FDI, that is Foreign Direct Investment or Foreign Direct Ideas? <laughs> in this room, when you have assembled, uh, to take India forward, if a uh, choice is given to you, <coughs> would you prefer foreign direct investment or would you prefer foreign direct ideas? How many of you say, <coughs> how many of you say foreign direct investment, raise your hand, close your eyes, so that nobody knows who is going what. Okay. Foreign direct investment is my number one preference, show your hand up. I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Reluctantly, as Indians gradually warm up, no, we are getting 12 and 13. Okay. How many go for foreign direct ideas? No, a much larger number. Down your hands. And how many of you both? And now you can buy that. And how many of you none? There are four options. Anand Mahindra was speaking the other day and he said that perhaps foreign direct investment can wait. I want foreign direct ideas. He was reimagining India. McKinsey has come out with that report. We are trying to see that at 75 when India becomes, how will it look like and what can we do about that? You know? Because India is going to become 75 very soon. Thank you, Professor Ashraf. I mean, I owe so much in my life to Ashraf. <clears throat> when I was the director of IM Indore, when you had any institution, the first job is to have a great team. Individuals can't take too long and very long. It's the team that works. And all of you are very experienced people. Some young people are going to take the experience and we are sharing the experience here. When you become number one, always have number one team around you. Know. You can't be number one without number one team around you. She said, she said that he's coming from a conference and they were talking about the talent. That's the number one challenge. And in fact, I was able to overcome the challenge partly by spotting Ashraf. He was abroad and I identified him and I told him that come down to I am in Goa. We need people like you. And he was kind. He flew from there, joined me. We made a team and we did quite a lot of things. So. The evidence of that is that after me demitting I am in 2008, it's 2005, good five years, he didn't forget to spot me. So when I was back to India in my short stint this time, he said, Doctor, you have to come to my institute. Well, I said, I owe to you. When you came to my institute, I have to go back to your institute. You know, how would I say no to you? So whenever you want, please let me know and I'll go back to your institute. I am here. I am honored. I am pleased. I am delighted. The audience, the opening addresses that you have listened, Babuji is drawing your attention to CAD. I thought it's a computer aided design that he wants to talk for the <laughs> textile, but he went on to <laughs> current account deficit. And when he started talking about current account de deficit, my mind started floating to CDR, you no? Know? There's a call detail reports which are being taught. You know? So Babuji, why CID does not get managed readily in India is because our engagement of energy is more with the CDRs and not CAD. We got to fix our priorities, we got to see where we want to put our energies about. You know? While I was listening to these two industrial leaders, 
I was reminded of that long back when I had gone to make much. I went to the classroom in 1971 for the first time. And the first conference perhaps I got was after two years. I have seen East, I have seen Middle East, and I have seen the West. My focus has been on financial markets for all these 40 years, and I am always delighted if I get even one person who is ready to listen to me, who have filled this room with such wonderful people. So you can imagine, I mean, I am bubbling up with the joy to talk to these people. What I talk? In the next about 55 minutes, I'll talk to you. The head points will be something like this. Before I talk about the emerging trends, I'd like to show to you the structure within which I'd like to delimit what I'm going to comment about, what I'm going to talk about. And I'm pleased to tell you that that slide about the structure which I'll show you soon after, this has survived with me for good 30 years. This slide I had made 30 years back. Don't uh, but I'm, I'm not bringing the same 30 year old slide, it is changing. Okay. Actually, 30 years back, there were dark black lines around it. Now you have the perforated per lines, I would say. That was a major difference. That came in 1990. When India got opening of the borders, I dropped the dark border of my slides and replaced it with the perforated lines. No, because now we are open. Ideas can come and go, and new generation which is coming is they are voting more for. FD ideas than FD investment. What are the implications of the trends which I am going to, with my limited eyes, you know, after all I am not able to do a kind of justice saying that this is the most exhaustive statement, some select trends that I have noticed and I like to talk to this audience in this hour. But what are the implications of this for the Indian economy, the retail investors, the financial education? and the jobs which I think will interest all of us in this room. I was asked to do a keynote address. I have listened to quite a few keynote addresses which are in the monotone of the Air India and India Alliance and I decided that I will not, I will do a keynote address but not in the form of the monotone. I will give it a dialogue, your questions are welcome. If any time any question comes to you, you can slip it on a piece of paper any time. And if I leave some time for you, that's a trick sometimes I play. And when I don't want to take any questions, I'll keep talking till the end and say, any questions now? I think I know everyone has the minimum of IQ and he says that a cup of coffee is better at that moment than any question that somebody would like to ask him at that time. Use it. You can slip a question in between. If I'm lucky and you're lucky, you get time for that question. Here is what, when I talk about the financial market, what is my perception of the financial market? What are the components of the financial market? Any, and I'm calling it national financial market. Now you replace this national by India, by China, by US, by Russia, but any country you can replace it and still the broad set of players, the components and segments that I'm talking will be there. And every country is surrounded by the regional and international financial players. This slide is a summary of a book which is titled Financial System. I see that in every financial system there are five sets of players. First is the savers. Second is the people who want to borrow the deficit. There are the savers and there are people who want more money. There are the deficit units. And in between are the intermediaries who bring them together. And when three of them start dancing, there is someone who is watching them and he is called regulator. And when all these four guys are doing their jobs, there is a fourth set of players who is supporting each one of them with the technology and with consulting and with accounting and with legal advice and all those things. So I see that when you think about the financial market of any country, think about the five sets of players. Savers, deficit units, intermediaries, regulators, and the support service providers. 
Sometimes I see that these are the guys who represent three streets which meet and make a financial market. Regulators sit on the Mint Street. Intermediaries are the Wall Street and the Dalal Street. And the Main Street is where the savers and the deficit units are sitting. When you talk about the market's major segments, GSEC is the government securities market. Government is a great borrower. Money market, short term. Capital market, long term. Forex market, currency trades. Commodities. Within these government securities, money and capital markets, you have the primary issuers and you have the secondary issuers. You have the stock exchanges and you have got the new issues. What are the instruments? In 1992, I came across a book on financial engineering and somebody had counted the total number of financial institutions which are being used every day in the financial markets in the globe. And that list was about 270 instruments, no? That book when I read in 1992, I was amazed because I had known only three to four when we talk about debt and equity and preference shares and commercial paper and all that. Think of the time now, the 20 years after, there is innovation going on every day. At the end of the day, money should get efficiently allocated to the people who will add value to that money. Should we be import dependent or should we be export dependent? Well, I would say that we should be value generating people. And here is one value generator. <laughs> we welcome Professor C.P. Gupta. My colleague of MDI. Great, I'll continue with this. What I was saying was that another dimension of the financial markets when we are going to talk is about the financial instruments. Fixed return, variable return, hybrids, mix of both, derivatives. You talk about bonds which he said he told you that we do not have a significant market here. We get loans from the banks more as debt. Stocks. Structured finance has been added over the last two decades. And alternative investment is the another category of instruments now, which is now much more popular. The main street players you know broadly are the three, the government and the public sector the private business and the households. So if you want to know what are the trends which are emerging in the financial markets in this country and the world over. In fact, financial market is one market which has actually a global financial market. There is nothing called domestic financial market. There is nothing called domestic financial market. Money moves at the speed of light. Finance has no nationality, we say. Finance goes where the return is. Secret is very simple. You want money in India? Give them competitive return. Is there anyone sitting in this room who does not get the SMS unwanted, unsolicited about the real estate offers? Is there anyone who doesn't get? All of us get. How many of you are really forwarding those messages, no? And how many of you are deleting? I think everyone is deleting, actually. Okay. Oh, why do you delete? Somebody has put the money behind, however smart it could be. He has sent a message to you. He is communicating. He is making you aware. He is getting you knowledge. And you are simply deleting it? Can someone tell me? Why, why, why do you delete it? Is there no space there in the device or there is some other reason? Or you say we never, we never delete? You delete? Is there anyone who deletes? Why? No faith. Majority of you don't have a faith in that message that you get. 
you want money in the real realty sector here create trust and faith you cannot get money just by making attractive glossy brochure you need to create trust you need to create faith you want money in india you need to create trust you need to create faith is there any segment that i am missing out when i am trying to draw the structure of the financial markets domestic and international anyone likes to add something that i missed it by and large 98% 99% is this good what are the trends what are the emerging trends landscape is before you now i talk about the players i talk about the segments of the market i talk about the instruments i talk about the main street what is happening to the economy to the people to the young students and others first trend that i have noticed is that the statutory regulation is overtaking self regulation should markets be left to the market or should market be regulated that's one question that's a perennial question should markets be left to the market or should markets be regulated i think this debate will never end because that fine drawing line that dividing line we have yet not arrived after years and years of debate and research markets left to itself are exploited exploitative regulators are too bureaucratic they don't let it move so where is that optimal balance where is that optimal combination do we need governments often when we talk about the governments it look like very disappointing kind of force do we need governments we need governments when you run the side of the government you did it there are young people i have seen their body language tell me we don't need the government i have i have i have come across they think you're too old to still accept that you need the government but anyway i have not changed yet and i still need, believe you need good government you need governance you need developmental government you need that you need security you need power you need police you need law and order you need government what is being noticed now is that there has this debate between regulation okay regulation can be self regulation that means the trade bodies will regulate themselves stock exchange will regulate themselves why should somebody sitting in the finance ministry be regulating what's going on in the stock market those members of the stock exchanges are they less educated do they have less interest of their own in their heart why can't they regulate themselves east as the history is we have been governed by foreigners and they left behind us the habit of being regulated so we are in the habit of statutory regulation compared to as you go across the atlantic so when you cross when you just across atlantic you go and you ask the question do you need government there are those republicans who would outright say we don't need government let's manage ourselves leave it to us we know how to further our interest we know how to protect i have met number of uh, industries in my daily talk with people know who say leave us alone there are 37 departments or any manufacturing company that i have to deal with and there are 30 days in a month i have my classmate he is an industrialist successful industrialist the other day we were sitting together and he told me that i have 37 departments that have to deal with and there are only 30 days of operation and you know that all 30 days are not the working days no? so you count that per working day how many departments must i be able to satisfy you? and most of the people in those departments do not know how a yard is spun or how a yard is manufactured and they are telling me how the industry should be run this debate is a very important point of discussion and debate for the people of ideas good ideas may not be respected and received easily but let's not stop factoring those ideas then let's not stop 
debating those ideas because the society in the end needs good ideas. This forum which you have organized here, I'm sure, is going to bring you a lot of dividend, not in the form of check for some money at the end of it, no, but it will lead to many checks being produced at some point of time. I have noticed, as I said, that almost 42 years I keep watch. I am a market watcher. I play also, which is not that I am a purely watcher. I am a trader also. So I trade on the stock market for myself as an individual professional, so I experience it that what is the greed there and what's the fear there and what is the information clutter there and what's the rumor there and what do the sell side analysts write and what goes on in the market. When crisis happened in a country like US, 1500 page, 1500 page legislation called Dodd-Frank Act was produced. And the title of that act was Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Under that act, there had been Consumer Financial Protection Bureau which had been created. America is a land which never liked so much of statutory regulation. In fact, somebody not joked, in all honesty, he made a statement. He said, I started from China two days back and arrived in the US and I still see that I am in China. And he is an authority in the area of financial markets. What he said is that there is so much of regulation around in this country now that it's very difficult to say that where is China and where is US. China was known for statutory regulation, not US, but US has got equal amount of self-regulation that's coming there. The self-regulation is now becoming number two. The years that I have on my side tell me that no impact can be achieved unless people buy in into certain ideas. Orders will be only skeletons running. Nothing will happen on the ground unless the people have the heart into it. <coughs> I am a great believer that self-regulation is more effective than the statutory regulation. It has shortcomings. We need to modify. We need to bring transparency. We need to talk about it. But I will still say that if we shut out self-regulation by more and more volumes of statutory regulation, I don't think we are going to go and do good for this markets. After the crisis, one more trend that I've noticed is that earlier, at least in the US, where I now speak in the classroom, you know, uh, in finance textbooks, C.P. Gupta and me, we have been parroting day in, day out what is the ultimate goal of a corporation run by Babuji at one time and now Shishirji and on their behalf, in the classroom, we say that the ultimate goal is maximization of shareholder wealth or stakeholder wealth. Once in US, I was speaking and I told them that in Asia, we say the stakeholder wealth more than the shareholder wealth. One guy got up in the class and told me that must be in the classroom, not in the boardroom, sir. He <laughs> said, what you are talking must be there in the Asia, in the classroom, but not in the boardroom. In the boardroom, it's maximization of shareholder wealth. But nevertheless, after the crisis, regulators are putting more faith and concern for the maximization of wealth of the stakeholders like depositors and borrowers who are there in the banking sector. Those of you who have been following and watching and reading about financial systems, they must have bought in their vocabulary three new words in the last about five years. Financial stability is the concern of the central bank. If you read what for the central bank like RBI or the Fed Reserve of US are created, the two main goals used to be stated was the price stability and growth. Price stability and growth. But after the crisis, in US, in the Treasury Department, a new forum has been created that is called Financial Stability Oversight Council. Financial Stability Oversight 
Council, which is actually a coordinating body of the different regulators of the different segments of the financial markets of US. New mandate. Central banks are taking over new mandates in addition to price stability and growth they are now also to help manage for the economy financial stability systemic risk institutions which pose systemic risk when lehman brother failed in us fed reserve did not come forward to save it when AIG was in trouble, Fed Reserve did come forward. Somebody said, why this love and hate relation? The answer was, there are certain institutions which are systemically important. So all financial institutions that you talk about, they are not equal. Some are systemically important. That means if they fail, they will bring devastation to the whole system. Therefore, you need to treat them different. First they were seen as too big to fail, then they were seen as too big to be allowed to fail. And in fact, after that, now you must have heard in the press, this problem is too big to jail. The three new terms which have come in the, after the crisis of 2008 is financial stability as a mandate for the central banks of the world, country by country. Second. The concern for the systemically important financial institutions in each country. And the third is the enterprise risk management. Rather than managing this at the department level, at the SBU level, at the silos level, to manage the risk at the entity level. Another trend which I have noticed is regulatory enforcement is picking up, is picking up, but right. Much remains to be done in most markets. The unfortunate thing about the statutory regulation is that by putting statutory regulation you cannot ensure the behavior because unless it is enforced well, it is useless. Lot of underdeveloped emerging markets are highly regulated on paper, but not on ground. Not on ground. It is creating an illusion of high regulation, but it's not regulation. So if there is any regulation, it's got to be effective in what? What's the purpose of regulation? To elicit a desired behavior. We want a certain behavior. It will not happen unless it is enforced. It is enforced. I will show you a list of the fines which have been imposed by the Justice Department of US in the recent past. Today morning you must have all read the news, cash for vote which happened in 2008 in July in this country, everybody got a clean cheat yesterday. Colossal waste of time of and energy of the people. Why is it in the parliament all the drama was made? Why is it that the media devoted so much of time? Why is it that so much time has been spent to follow it up and talk about it? Cash for vote. You find it at the end of five years, clean check for those who were alleged to and clean check to those who did the sting. Because they were making an honest effort to expose. This society can afford to waste so much of energy on this. It's a strange justice where both the parties are clean check. It defies common sense. But that should not be common. I talk a few more trends and that is about, I have now shifted from the regulation to the savings and investment trend. The other set of players. I am not showing you the data because there must be a lot of people who have some interest in research. In fact, every statement that I am making here is a researchable hypothesis. And I wish that somebody will spend some time, if interested, to do some research. And I will tell you where to get the data to test it. That I will tell you. But I thought that since it will be maximum one hour, I will not like to bring all the data. And otherwise, data sets are beautifully available now compared to when I started. 
when I was studying in 1969 for my MCOM, we used to cheat your know, friends, you know, by deliberately hiding the book of economics into physics, you know, so that those guys will not be able to bore in the morning and I can go back to the physics section and take my economics book and read it. You know. Now not. Reserve Bank of India website, data mine. Fed Reserve US, data mine. Bank for International Settlement, data mine. IMF, data mine. I mean, there are resources, free of cost, historical time series available about, in my sense, what was unimaginable for me, is free of cost available to this generation. You want to know what's happening to the savings? She said she quoted you 30% of the GDP is what you have the savings in India. Well, they will tell you the whole series from 1951. From 1951 to 2012, what are our savings? They will tell you what are your capital formation that has happened in this country. They will tell you what the CPI is. Oh, they talk, not CP Gupta. They will talk about CPI. Yeah. Now, when you, when I was looking at it, I can say that the household, there are three sectors in the main street, as I told you, government with public sector, private sector, business, and the household. In India and most of Europe to East, that means to the East side of the Atlantic, I am saying, the whole of the geography where you go over, you will find household are the prime source of savings, not the businesses, not the private businesses, not the government. Oh, the poor masses, the poor masses are the prime source of savings and they are continuing to be there. But in US, it's not the households, it's the private businesses who save more money than the household as part of the total savers, what I am saying, the prime savers I am saying. It's not that the household don't save, but of course, Americans now by culture have a very low habit of saving. Actually, they consider that they are loading yourself if you save some money. You should spend all the money that you get. Nevertheless, the trend is, you want savings, where are the savings? East, household, still intact. There, it is still the businesses. Another trend I have seen is that in the years that are gone by, now for the last about 10 years, financial assets, there are two group of assets, financial and physical. Financial assets are constituting a larger portion of the household portfolio. Big savers, prime savers, households, where do they hold their money? Physical assets, financial assets. I mean, this ratio used to be very much towards physical and less about financial and we used to say that the financial markets are not well developed in this country, especially India-like and therefore not much people spend money on the financial assets. In 2007 and 8, the household investment in financial assets was larger than the physical assets. Now you know why the crisis happened. What is OMC did? The year in which the financial assets holding of the household was the largest, we had the crisis, the market went down. It has certain insights and I am going to return to it in my slide little while after. What the behavior of the stock market and what the behavior of the major dominant players of the stock market will talk a little while after. At the moment I am limiting myself to where is the savings and where is the investment? One more thing which I like to draw and those who are the researchers for them for life. Information asymmetry, unequal information. Insider trading is the one form of that. Insider trading is the one form of that. Information asymmetry that means unequal information. Conflict of interest. Financial sector all over the world has been organized in such a way when you mix up the business of the commercial banking and securities together in the form of a universal bank with a conflict of interest. When you combine the credit rating and the consulting under the same credit rating and information services firm with a conflict. The financial services sector has been organized in such a way that there is a conflict. You want these household people to have the faith in you. You want that when you send a text unsolicited and unasked for on their mobile devices, 
about the new offer coming in Greater Noida and in smaller Noida, they should forward it to someone. We need trust. We need faith. Let me sum up that the three gapping holes in the financial market are information asymmetry, conflict of interest, and weak regulatory enforcement. If you really want to see that money will not be in shortage, good ideas will be chased by money. Good ideas will be chased by money, three things. Until you don't do it, will not happen. I don't see the bright light unless we are able to bring relief in terms of the three gapping holes that anybody has noticed, like me, in the financial services sector, there is information asymmetry, huge. There is conflict of interest, huge. There is a weak regulatory enforcement, huge. One more trend I'd like to mention here, and that is, Stock markets, housing and cars are highly interest rate sensitive. And please note what I am putting in the parenthesis and indicators of elusive growth. Babuji, when I met you this morning, you said you are coming from US. There was crisis, what happened that everybody is talking about has it recovered or not? The question is this. When the crisis is known to everybody, how much recovery has actually happened, that is what everybody wants to hear. And there is a divided view. Some are seeing the recovery and some are not able to see the recovery. Those who are able to see the recovery is they quote three things. Stock market, housing, cars. Cars are selling more. Houses are being sold more. House prices are going up. Stock market is jumping. Yesterday crossed 1800 S&P and 16,000 Dow Jones. But when the old cars are sold, they don't add to the GDP of the country. When the old houses are sold, they don't add to the GDP of the country. When the shares are traded, they don't add to the GDP of the country. You want growth of the gross domestic product. If you want to see the reality, it is somewhere else. Unfortunately, Information is presented in such a way where it, when it comes that sometimes it's difficult to decode what the message is, what the intent is. Words have got different meanings. So when you talk about FDI, be clear you are talking about foreign direct investment or foreign direct ideology. Politicians will jump, stock market goes down. Stock market is up, it's doing well. Not my dear, real sector of the economy is still waiting somewhere else. One more observation and that is, which is known to all of you, stock market volatility is increasing. Do you think it is good or bad? If what I am stating is right, and I think you would agree with me, I can check with CP. CP, do you think that the stock market volatility is rising? Is going up? In some cases, yes. In some cases, yes. Is it good or bad? Question to you. Stock market volatility is good or, oh by the way, are you all meditating or with me? <laughs> Great. Is it good? How many of you say it is bad? One, two, three, okay. How many of you say it is good? Where are others? Not aligned. Well, they are neither here nor there. But well, you got to be somewhere. But it can be good and bad. People say trend is the best trend. Then they watch it. It's a 3D company. 3D printing you must have heard. There are new innovations which are coming to the market and the two new innovations which are going to rule the market is 3D printing. And 3D printing, there are some four, five, there are 12 companies, but the fourth company is got listed on the end. Uh, new York Stock Exchange was VJet, a German company. IPO, $19. In the last about six days, $68. After the first quarterly report, from $19, $68. After three days, footage of the factory area, they have got the same inventory levels which they had only three days back. They have only sent out one more printer in this one week. What has happened? It's dancing and jumping. Volatility is definitely high. Why it is so much high and why it is high here? 
is a global mobility of funds. Don't count the 30% savings of the poor people of India. Now I showed you the structure is no dark closer lines is all perforated. There will be seepages left and right. There will be seepages left and right. Mr. Manmohan Singh only the other day, yesterday I think he said, it's very, it's very difficult to understand these capital flows today in the globe. Where do they come and where do they go? It's very difficult to understand. The chairman of the Fed Reserve, Ben Nikkei, the other day he had made a statement that I am at loss to understand the prices of the gold. He was shedding tears. <coughs> Rightly so, because they also get hurt sometimes. Because the value of the holding of the central bank gold will also go down when the gold prices will go down from 1900 to 1500 to 1241 US dollar per ounce. They will also suffer. This slide will be showing something interesting because it's from home. This is the Diwali gift I saw next morning on Diwali. This was the report from Times of India. We say that the, on the Samvat day, index rises 14% thanks to easy money policy of US. Now you can understand. Your 30% savings, how relevant? The Times of India was thanking the easy money policy of US. An easy money policy of US? By whom? Ben Bernike? He is going. Who will come? Competition between two persons. Yellen? And prior to that, there was another competitor. No? Larry. Larry Summers. So there was a competition. Obama was to choose between two of the top economists, Larry Summers and Yellen. When Larry Summers' name came, market went down. When Larry Summers' name was removed from the competition, market went up. When the yen is being accepted, the market is going up. Why? Because they believe yen will continue this easy money policy till 2016 and 17. Babuji and Shishirji, how is your productivity doing in your mills? Nobody asks. They say, will yen be there or will summer be there? Summer was a bit hard-headed guy who are old school guy who will say the engine of growth is not consumerism but investment. There is a great debate about this. There are two schools of thought. One says borrow and buy, people will invest for you. The other says no, 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 no. save and invest, then people will buy. You as the thinkers have to spend time along with me. Which model is going to really be sustainable. Be sustainable. Take a look at this number and you can read in the Times of India on the summer day as they gave it, no? Just notice what is the change percentage that is happening from it is shown from 2002 to 2013. Now there is a I mean the sensex is going minus 5.2%, it goes 59% up next year. One thing please remember, and Shishiji, you will, I think, appreciate along with me, small numbers tend to jump much higher. That means if somebody is 100 and he comes down to 50, we say it's a 50% decline. But when 50 becomes 100, it's a 100% rise. So you can set, you might start celebrating double. Okay, because the, the down was 50% and the rise is 100%. Like I said, you see these numbers here, in 2008, the census went down 55% and in 2009, it was 92% up. From 55 down, it has gone to 92 up. Actually, to just to wait, you require 110. Yeah. To say that you have recovered from where you fell, you required a, a jump of 110. Should we celebrate 92? But we'll celebrate. And let me say that even with 110, you are still loser. Can you tell me of what? Or you say you are a stupid professor. You always see the loss. I mean, you are not happy with 92%. You are still talking of 110% only to equate. And even if you equate, I'm saying that you are still loser. How are you a loser? 
you get uh, any return on that money you lose that 8.5% for everybody and 9.5% for babuji and myself senior citizens yeah so it is absolutely just see though know, these numbers need to be seen behind them what a wonderful game is going on no just see the market cap how it is moving 0.76 gets added in lakh crore rupees 4 lakh 5 6 12 30 36 gone now you add up this much over 5 years and take out 36 how much gain have you left with the net come back have faith we want to help you to earn more easy is tough to manufacture textile compete and sell in the market without brand and with brand no just put money in the shares and the money is yours flying who is the gainer and who is the loser need to be counted and i'll show you the numbers we have the numbers intermediation the people who are in between what are the trends happening there you are absolutely right cgt when you said that much of the source of debt in the indian corporates are the banks not the bonds not only here in every part of the world except usa i am saying every part of the world except usa banks continue to be the predominant suppliers of funds not the non bank or the markets but in usa is different is a non bank sector with the predominant sector there shadow banking you must have heard this name this is being talked only for the last about again 5 to 7 years is the is done that the new vocabulary which has come to the financial terminology you know shadow banking that's unregulated banking the way to make money is they said regulate deregulate re-regulate deregulate re-regulate but the people who make, who want to make money is they always search for the loopholes in the regulation they always search for the loophole for the regulation have some respect for those people who are working hard trying to fly under the radar and seeking those loopholes in the regulation that means they want less regulation please give them less regulation they will perform better definitely you give the okay you say that the indians love and die for gold no therefore you restrict the import they smuggle can you kill the instincts you can teach good values but the instincts are difficult to kill shadow banking is fast expanding and what hit will it give we do not know because we do not know the size of the problem and let me shock you that don't think that this shadow banking which is non banking that the banks are not playing into this they are also indirectly participating in the shadow banking i am at loss where this circular thing is moving where it begins and where it ends universal banking is becoming too opaque you know about banking those who are the students of banking they will know this word opaque balance sheets of the banks are called most opaque opaque means vague by looking at the balance sheet of a bank you cannot make a judgment whether it is a strong bank or a weak bank if you have given more loans big bank you don't recover anything npas what's the what's the what's the number one problem of the indian banking npas not performing assets no the real problem is unreported npas the report is lower than the real npa that's the problem because when the volcano will erupt that day will not be left with much time to secure your goods and family and jewels then universal banking commercial banking security banking even shadow banking all is getting into one everybody cries about payday loans in america and you know the rate of interest they charge in america on payday loans it will be out of the top floor of this building where we are sitting if i tell you 370% will you believe me 
I'm talking per annum, not for 10 years. Can you believe that in an economy called USA, there can be interest rates charged today in the vicinity of 370% per year? That's called payday loans, where people are, many people live in that country payday to payday. And in the last few days, cultures are different. I was reading one newspaper report which says that the greatest stress for the Canadian these days is because of the Thanksgiving gifts which they have given to the friends. So you do not know the stress you can take from where. But many people live payday to payday and the interest they charge these guys, sharks during that period is 370%. And my dear friends, are the regulated banks in any way related to this practice of payday loans? Yes. Because after all, it is the check to be cleared in the clearing system of these banks. So don't think that when this practice is going on of so-called the sharks of 370% annual rate of interest on the payday loans, the other banks are just off the limits, not off the limits. Univers <coughs> London Vale comes and plays, takes, brings six billion dollars to a bank. Now what policy makers are able to do? The other day I was reading a news that the SEBI, SEBI stands for what I don't know, Security and Exchange Board of India, great to remind me. Now the SEBI is telling the stock exchanges that they should monitor more carefully the top 500 listed companies of this country. SEBI is statutory regulator. Stock exchanges are self-regulation. So what you notice is you made great regulations called statutory and mandatory, but they need the help of the self-regulators to actually implement it, to bring that transparency. Ethical financial intermediation, like many other good societal values, is on the decline. If anybody has a doubt, has a doubt? Good you don't have. Otherwise, I'll show you this slide. Yeah. In the financial markets today, fine is fine. When you pay a fine, you say, good, I have settled. When, when JP Morgan is being charged $13 billion, $13 billion fine. And when I saw the body language which was shown in the picture of uh, Jamie Dimon, I was really Good to learn that that's the way you do the business. You settle for 13 billion and smilingly walk away. Good, it's over. Off my back. Off my back. I don't think you are missing all those eagles of the financial market in this list. If you are missing, read it once more. It's a regular again Times of India. All eagles of the world are found in this red card. What are they involved into? It's explained. Where is RBI? Where are our banks? After looking it up, that question came to my mind. The whole world says that we are no less corrupt than anybody else. Where are our banks? They don't pay any fine. I scratched through and I found that there is a statement that RBI fined 65 crore approximately to 31 private and public sector banks so far. Please underline the word so far because you still have got about a month more. So, RBI so far has fined about 65 crore rupees to private and public sector banks for violation of KYC and AML. KYC is know your customer. Know your customer. Actually, good banking, since I'm a professor of banking, I say it's KYCC. Know your customer's customer. Yeah, good banking is not KYC. Good, ba good, good banking is KYC. Actually, you cannot classify yourself as a bank if you don't do KYCC. What a fun! You are being fined in this country for KYC, AML, AML is what? Anti-money laundering. Anti-money laundering. Do you think there should be no other uh, violation committed by these uh, great Indian banks so far? Those of you who say yes, no more, raise your hand. You have only two hands, don't you? Support services trends. What's happening those who come to support all these great players? E-banking and banking are on the 
Right. Very good. You all are the users of M banking, mobile banking, internet banking, while well, digital finance is the future. No disagreement ever. It cannot be physical because I was just thinking of there was a very nice slide I saw somewhere who showed that if you stack US one dollar bills whose thickness is 0 0.0043 inch each US dollar one dollar bill its thickness is 0 0.0043 inch if you put one on the other one trillion dollar you reach one fourth of the distance to moon from earth We were talking about what are the capital flows happening in this world. How many trillion dollars? There's more than 220 trillion dollars that we're talking of 210 as reported by one consulting company. What is the size of the flow that's happening? We don't need physical dollars. It is only digital and digital and digital. Okay? But when the digital comes, security and its cost will continue to the real issues for quite some time yet. Very sign is doing a lot of good work, but still, it takes time for me to put my heart. And especially when I go for little small picnic spots, no, I never took out my credit card. Credit card should be used only in the places where you think that the people will be respecting your security. Have you heard this new thing which is now being talked very vehemently in the press? Bitcoin? Very good. I congratulate you. That's the way. Keep up. Know what's happening. How many of you think it's being talked that this will be the alternative currency in the years to come? How many of you think it will be alternative currency? Raise your hand. That is the younger generation. Everybody is less than 30 years. I can bet. There is none of you who is more than 30 years old who is putting the hand up. These guys will take a lot of time to change. I wish I lived that many years as you live and meet again. It's a gimmick in my understanding because my old years. Let's see when when becomes the orbit currency. Of the world, sir. Sorry? Of the world. Of the world? Yes. Sir. Yeah, I, I, I respect you. But I wish that we wait for some time more. Great innovations are happening. This is one of the finest innovations to be written and talked about. We got to wait for some time. Financial media and analysts are the fast multiplying breed now you know very well. I think that should bring a smile on the face of all young finance graduates because there's no other sweet spots for these guys for their job. So don't think about the corporate offices only. You know, look for the media and look for the analyst job. And I'll advise you one thing just at this point only for the students. Seekingalpha.com how many of you have seen the website seekingalpha.com? My hand has gone up. I'm happy. Oh, thank you, Ashraf, for bringing me. And I'm able to at least say something with my young friends didn't know. Go and take a look at seekingalpha.com and you will see every 10 minutes an analyst is producing a report on some company of the world. For why should you read that? Not to read the report. To read the report to learn how you can also produce the same kind of report. Does it interest you? Let me tell you, you are eligible to publish even today when you are a student on that website. You have to write and upload and anyone who will click on that article will get you, I think, 10 cents. 10 cents. So you can start making money by writing. If it is too rash and too stupid, no, okay, you lose nothing, 10 cents, so what? But if you are able to create a name too early, too fast, God bless you, who knows. Ashraf told me that some consultants are paid hefty money, no? You got to aim that, no? Read SeekingAlpha.com to learn how these great minds are able to produce every 10 minutes a report on some company of the world. Well, I would like to mention here that the information asymmetry which I said is a gaping hole in the financial services sector over these years that I have spent, I can admit that it is being reduced. 
compared to when I started student age is reduced, but much remains to be done. I still salute to RBI, Fed Reserve, ECB. ECB is what? European Central Bank. ECB, BAS, Bank for International Settlement. That's the Central Bank of the Central Banks in Switzerland. Great free sources of time series data. I can actually flood you with the data if I so decided to just copy and paste in these slides from those sources which I know. But I thought that that would be a bad thing. What can be done by somebody else? Why should I do it? So I should just tell them that you can read it. But all that is I'm writing here is coming out of my analysis of the data from these sources. <coughs> paid analysts and planted analysts. So what is this paid analysts and planted analysts? That is the reality of stock markets. They are there and they are clutter more than information. So there's a difference between information and clutter of information. So when you will see alpha, seekingalpha.com, there will be certain pieces which you will see clutter and not really the analysis of information. But still they sell, they get 10 cents for every hit, even if it's a clutter. And actually clutter sometimes you see more often. Dark pools. I think only very few of you in this room must have known dark pools of the financial markets. Dark spots, dark holes we read, no? Which dark, dark pools are the private exchanges, dark pools are the private stock exchanges run by some multinational banks. When you want to sell your shares, how many you buy? 50, 10, 120, no? If you have got 10 million shares and you want to offload it, and the word comes through, you are offloading 10 million, the price will go to the earth. Therefore, these things are secretly done in the private rooms of certain selected banks, which are called the dark pools. Do you think it has an implication for what the prices you see in the stock market? Very much. Very much. They yeah. have. Stock exchanges provide one economic subject called discovery of price. Well, with the dark pools around, the price is not discovered by those who just play on the stock market, which is known to you as public platform, but including those which you call the dark pools. Premium subscribers, there are some high net worth individuals like Babuji and there are poor people like Parashar. So he will have a minimum investment account of $500,000 in JP Morgan and therefore their special analyst will send him a report every morning, where should he put the money. I would like to know where Babaji is putting the money and to put the money there. Well, I'm already having the second hand knowledge and I want to beat Baba, but I don't know if I can beat him. But nevertheless, this is the asymmetry of information. Remember, you retail investors, when, when go on the stock market, don't forget that you're dancing with elephants. And therefore, the risks of dancing with elephants should be known to you in advance. Credit rating has lowered itself, I need not say anything more. A few trends more of the market I'd like to highlight. First is, word is a midest undeclared currency bar. Nobody has declared. In fact, there is no need today for the military war. You can defeat the countries and you can win the countries through the currency bar. You can. Abe economics, when Abe became the Prime Minister of Japan, what he decided was easy money. We want to shake that stagnation that the Japan is facing, put more money in the market. Let the yen devalue. Let the yen devalue. All central banks around the world, we don't know. They are constantly in a war. And there's a war of the foreign currency rates. So 68, 62, 50, it means a lot to the miseries and pains and gains of the society. Your import bill, I was talking to an oil company only yesterday and they were crying that when the, when the rupee, RBI is great, they sometimes give a quota to those oil bills to pay for their imports. But if they have to buy in the open market, you can imagine of course the cost they have to do. And there is a subsidy being given so they the under recovery. And under recovery does not get paid on the time and they have to borrow from the market. And when they borrow from the market, the interest cost go up, the bottom line goes down and you say that the public sector is an inefficient sector. Things are linked in different parts of this market. Well, I would say that while this war is going on, 
Babuji, you will be surprised to know that America has rung in my memory always CAD. If you see the current account deficit, we are buried in India, America has always rung CAD. With the current account deficit. But the rupees, the economics 101, the first lesson is when you have a deficit current account, the currency will go down. American currency is not going down. Before the crisis, I was watching the rate of 1.48 to a euro. It has been in the range of 1.33, 1.34, 1.35 to a euro. After the crisis, has the economy recovered? What has happened? Now the answer there is, America is slipping, but the whole world is slipping much faster than them. The life is relative. 15 also, quantitative easing will continue in America. Will much change happen to the world? No. Is it contingent effect? We are all linked. Times of India says, celebrates. Your index made 14% thanks to the US easy money. Few more. Stock market is hardly a barometer of an economy. When I was a student of MCOM, we used to write an essay. Stock market is a barometer of the economy. After 40 years of my learning and living, I say it is hardly a barometer of the economy. And particularly if you think in terms of six to three months period, it's a hardly a barometer. <laughs> One more observation, which is a distinct observation, and that is bank credit is more potent than money stocks as mover and shaker of the real economy. The two observations I'm going to make now should put you thinking for one week, not for one hour. <coughs> Listen me carefully and think about it, what I'm saying. Bank credit is more potent than money stocks, that's M1, you know that M1, M2 measures of the money stock, as mover and shaker of the real economy. So if you want to make a change in the real economy, GDP, you don't watch just the money stocks, you got to watch the bank credit. And I am now reinforcing that thought with the next observation, which is technical again, and that says, bank credit is a function of interest rates and non-interest rate factors like loan to value ratio. When you go to borrow money from the bank, one thing they consider is the rate they will charge. The second is, are you eligible or not? And the collateral is what they seek from you. And the collateral value who you provide is what they are seeking from you. Because of that, the loan to value ratio the debt service coverage ratio, DSCR, is called the debt service coverage ratio. The margins they apply to the collateral that you give to them. So the bank credit is not just a function of rates. Bank credit is a function of rates and non-rate factors. Please therefore know, near zero interest rate is thus by itself only half the story. So somebody can always take the press intent coverage to say that we are keeping the interest rate near zero to turn over the economy, my dear friends, America will not be able to turn over the economy by just keeping the interest rate near zero. They need to do something more. What is that? People take the credit. You keep the cost low and people don't take the credit. Why? Because they don't have a faith in the market where they have got to produce and sell. Thank you very much. Celebrate Kiwi. What is happening? What the result is? Not that the real economy is recovering, stock market is recovering. And that's why they say it's not a good parameter. Two more other issues on derivatives. Derivatives dominate the financial markets that you all agree. The daily volume, notional value is in the vicinity of 5 trillion. You need digital finance because I told you that 1 trillion, if you put 1 dollar bill on one another, where does it go? With 5 trillion, I think you can touch the moon and come back at least one fourth of the way. Alternative investments, that is derivative shares in debt, forex, commodities, real estate, these are the new asset class called the invest, alternative investments and they are definitely becoming popular. So I today don't invest in silver. I invest in pro-silver share. So the share which moves with the price of the silver, I invest in that and not in the silver. So you have two options. You can put in the silver or you can put in the derivative of the silver. So I'm able to, I, I like to put there because the volatility is more and I love volatility as far as I get the benefit. Unpleasant observations but true. Main Street what is happening? 
Please read with me, retail investors is milk. And the data will say that. You want to hand me or you want mine? I speak based on the data. Real, uh, and the retail investor is milked both by the wall or the Dalal Street and the Mid Street. I am saying both streets. There are three streets only in the financial market. One is the Main Street, the other is the Dalal Street and the third is the Mint Street. The two guys at the Mint and the Dalal and wall, they are actually milking the retail. These are the retail guys who are called the source of savings and we, not, we need to have this country to grow with more savings. What return are you getting? What return are they getting? Retail investors continue to hurt most from, if I say who hurts them, information is between number one. IPO pricing is another. Price attacks, let's call the short selling, those who are the hawks, no? Gold price is down, not because, despite the love of the Indian, the gold price is down because the JP Morgan so decides. You can't do anything. The largest hold is with the JP Morgan, not with anybody else. They can decide to sell, they can stop the short selling at a point and recover all the money by buying at that place, creating a panic that people are down with you. That's called the price attacks the market and they do happen, which happened to VJX when it was moved from 19 to 68 and from 68 to 32, just in two days. High frequency trading. In my olden days when I was a student, we used to hear circular trading. Circular trading means one trader sells to the other, the other trader sells back to the trader. Price discovery is happening for the retail investor. A McKinsey study I am quoting now here. The title of the study is Quantitative Easing and Ultra Low Interest Rates Distribution Effects and Risks. It has come in this month only a few days back. This shows that in Eurozone, UK and USA during 2007 12, after the crisis, with all the great intention and initiatives of the central banks of all the regions, to bring recovery back to the countries suffered, what has happened is McKinsey study says government benefited 1.6 trillion, non financial corporations benefited 710 billion, and the household lost 630 billion. Source of prime major savings in an economy is the households. Return they get is in real terms, negative. When you get 8.5% and, and you, I get as a senior citizen 9.5% and, and the inflation is 10%, I think you know very well, I am being cheated by half percent. So when you celebrate that our stock market in the summer day made 14% return, actually the return was only about 3 or 4% because 10% was to be given to the inflation guys. That really wala who was selling me onion, I had to pay him all that 10% very easily. I will keep home only 4%. So I must say that I celebrate 4%, not 14%. What are the implications? Where do we go? Where is that glimmer of light? Well, I would say, when you talk about the trends, in the earlier days, we used to talk about trends for 10 years and 5 years and 7 years. The age of the trends is now maximum 3 years. When you talk about trends and you want to project the trends, no? 3 years. Life is going to definitely change in 3 years. I am saying whatever I am going to state about the implications for the Indian economy is God bless us, we get a new investment source. We have one number which I all of you like to watch. And you should celebrate Diwali on that day when the net capital flow, the net capital formation of India, net capital formation of India, you find is really jumping from what the level that we have for three, four years. Because I'm an old school thought. I believe that a sustainable growth to an economy comes through investment capital formation. And I, I love to watch that number more. I am not very satisfied with the stock market going up and down. In fact, Rajan was also very open the other day, our new governor of the RBI, when he said that when stock market goes up or down, please don't look at me. I think he was very honest because he knew that the stock market can go up and down, not because of only, but not 100% right because if by appointment of Yaman, the market can go up and if I just Remove by just bringing in Larry Summers, 
the market can go down, I think the face of the government is very important. It's got to be looked. Well, I see the coming two to three years unless election brings some different thing. The image of the country changes. The trust and faith, I underline the word. The foundation of the markets is the trust and faith. If the trust and faith will change, whatever we are seeing will change. Till the trust and faith in this market change, what I see is the cost of finance is going to continue rising. The supply of finance is going to be limited. Investment will stagnate. Jobs will suffer. Some pockets can distinguish. You have certain pockets. I'm talking about the average total of the economy. Consumption will not be cut because in the same speech uh, uh, when Mr. Mukesh Ambani he said, he also said, not only technology, sir, he said aspiring youth. India is blessed with the aspiring youth who may like to borrow but spend. They are aspiring. They want a lifestyle. Americans did before you because they believe this is the only life. Our culture said, Nahi is bar, hoga, toh bar kar lenge, ye nation hai, dusre janam mein ho jayega. Vaise toh yahan safar karo, sare purne ikathe karo, ahi baat sare ke sare mil jayega. <laughs> but those guys don't believe in this. They say this is the only life, therefore borrow and live. Ahi baat dekha jayega. Inflation will not go away, my friends, despite our best prayers and wishes. The net result will be that the individual and national debt will further go up as it is going in the past which is a recipe for the future financial crisis. What are the implications for Professor Ashraf, for the students, for a professor earning his livelihood by talking all the time? I'll go to that after telling you briefly, retail investors, if you want to become what you got to do, to live dancing with the elephants. When you go to the stock market, you're dancing with the elephants. So you have risk. How do you protect yourself? Three things. Educate yourself. Do the due diligence. Don't go by the tips, please. Read the Seeking Alpha, but immediately go back to do at least preliminary research. Don't go by the conclusion of the author of the article who's paid 10 cents for every hit. Discipline yourself. And the discipline means risk limits. Have you seen any guy who has bought the lottery in your neighborhood and he was weeping and committing suicide? No, you would not have seen. Many people buy lotteries in your neighborhood, but you have not seen they are committing suicide or they are weeping. But many people in the stock market, you have seen that first they talk about shares in English and then they speak share in Urdu. <laughs> they cross it from share to share. So you hear share from those guys who go to the stock market. But lottery wallers, no chakkar nahi. Why? Because in the risk limit they have put. Lesson for you who want to go on the stock market must have a risk limit, exposure limit. 10,000, 20,000. There will be greed time. There will be, it will happen. It has happened to me. Fuel, one share, I had bought for 53, it went to 60.87. I had put my sticker at 60.90 and I did not sell. And next morning it was only 51. I am now waiting for the reversal to happen, it will take 15 days. Because I am still not weeping, because it's my money. I have not to pay interest on that. Had I have borrowed that money, I would have definitely cried out. Limit, limit, limit is the savior if you ever want to go, but, but should go. Okay, let me also advise. Young people must make a limit of 10,000 whenever you get the time, but must play the stock market. Because it's a great training. It's a great training for the mind. Is a great training for the mind. Within the limit, must play. I'm not a salesman for any broker, but it's true. Financial institutions, Professor Ashraf, course curriculum must include, therefore, good talk about financial derivatives. We are preparing these people for the market. There should be enough coverage on when there is a five trillion dollar transaction size every day of the derivatives. How can I escape not talking adequately about the derivatives in my classroom? Investment analysis, 
your director was saying that finance may not be my specialization, but I am also interested in knowing where to put the money or not. In fact, I have been training for years and years finance for non-finance. So when I go to train the executives finance for non-finance, after half hour I realize that the title of the program is wrong. <laughs> because there is no finance guy sitting there. So everybody is interested in finance. And then I am reminded that in India we are told that there are only four objectives of life for every human being. Dharma, Artha, Dhamma, Moksha. And that was in the Treta Yuga. Actually in the Kali Yuga, when Tulsi Ji wrote, wrote the Ramayana, he, 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 he changed the priority. Earlier we used to say Dharma, Artha, Dhamma, Moksha. Now we say Artha, no, Dharma, no, Dhamma, Dhamma. So he has put the Earth before everything else. So if you do the conference of finance, it's very relevant for everybody. Do talk about ethics and do talk about law. Ethics is self-regulation, law is statutory regulation. We need both. They actually are organic reading. Finance employment portals, you have not seen yet. But in the second year, you must see e-finance. Is a very good portal on employment. Senior people going to that. Why I am saying is not that you will be recruited as a senior finance professional in the first year. But you should know where you want to go. And the teachers of finance should take a look at it so that they modify their course curriculum and they include those skills which are in demand in the market today. One last suggestion is an old suggestion which C.P. Gupta was with me and we did it. We had an industry advisory board for our finance and accounting department. I was the chair of the finance and accounting department. The C.P. was my colleague there. And we created that, I tell you from my personal experience, it's a great value addition. We must have industry advisory council to periodically facilitate review and restructure course curriculum. It will help placement also. It will help placement also. Because those guys who will be giving papers inside for the meeting, their faces will be more recognized than when they appear somewhere, no? They are a good guy, yeah, yeah. Jobs, what will happen to jobs? Interested in hearing about jobs? Not the first four rows, but after that everyone. Uh, finance jobs requiring new skills like investment research and analysis, business valuation, compliance, financial media, financial technology, data mining, and forecasting will add, will sure add. Prepare yourself to go into these segments. There is a new university coming in US called Singularity University. There is a new university coming up in California that is known as Singularity University the prime mission of that university is to train people in forecasting. People should be trained in the art and science of forecasting. Management is what? Foreseeing the future better than before others. Every course curriculum should have forecasting. Prepare yourself with these skills and let me show you. Jobs are there. We have to restructure the Job market is restructuring and we have got to play it by the new turf. One last suggestion is doable. Any of my suggestion I am making is doable. This is not just coming from the blue up 40,000 feet, no, on the ground. New startups, do you think any of you can dare to think that you will not take up a job and go for the new startup? Please do. From Jaipur, the two brothers, they are getting the private equity here. They are going to have their small startup for $900 million. They are putting the IPO value on that. <coughs> this technology is bringing wonders. And let me tell you what somebody wrote many years back, the flat word, that flat word is now coming. And it is becoming flat because of internet. It is becoming flat because of internet. It is becoming flat because of air conditioning. Air conditioning also contributes a lot to make the world flat. But, air, uh, but internet is doing a great job. So please think about the startups and the, with the small money startups can be started today. Apps is something I have seen people in the school age in America. Everybody thinks about apps. They want to sell something to Google. They want to sell something to Google. Okay, go beyond apps. But these are the, just don't think about the corporate office. How to do it? India, everybody is suffering from problem of funds. We don't have the funds. I, I have the ideas. I don't have the funds. 
I don't know why Anand Indra said that we want foreign direct ideas. In fact, we still want more money. Everybody says I can't do it because I don't have money. There is a very easy solution. Did you come across the cloud funding? Crowd funding. People are asking for donation for the ideas and people are giving donation. And they are not giving only in America, they are giving everywhere. But more than that, the way Steve Jobs moved, the way the Facebook people have moved, please go that way. What's that way? Form partnerships. Shake hands with some of your friends in the class. We are made for each other forever. Marriage is one form. I'm not talking of that. I'm talking of business partnerships. These business partnerships will be built only on trust and ethics. Finance market can be built and can sustain only on trust and faith. The users of this market can make use only based on trust and ethics. Good luck to you. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much.